BIM 360 Docs represents a collaborative cloud-based repository for your plan sheets and supporting files. In this session, we'll take a quick tour of the interface. As you can see, I've got BIM 360 Docs open. At the top of the screen, you can see the account that I'm working in. It's called JWB Engineering. To the right of the account name, we'll see the name of the current project. In this case, it's called Arkansas Site. If I click the arrow next to the project name, I can jump to any other project within this account. I'm going to stick with the current project. I'll click on screen to close the menu. Now, when a project is open, on the left side of the screen, you'll see the directory structure that's used to store uploaded files. You can have as many folders over here as you like. These folders are navigated much like the folders on your local computer. If I select a folder, you can see the contents of that directory over here to the right. I'm going to jump back to the plans folder. Notice this divider that separates the directories. This is to remind us that these folders process files differently. Files placed in folders above this line get special treatment. If I were to upload a multi-sheet PDF plan set into this folder, it will automatically be separated into individual sheets. If, however, I were to upload that same multi-sheet PDF into one of these lower folders, it will simply be saved within the folder. For this reason, these folders below the line are typically used for general file storage, and the folders above the line are typically used to store printed plan sheets. Once again, I am currently in the plans folder. Over here to the right, we can see all of the PDF sheets that make up this plan set. If I drag the slider to the right, we can see additional information like the title, the version, when the file was last updated and by whom. We can see if each sheet has any markups or issues associated with it, as well as some additional information. Let me drag this back over. Very similar to a program like Microsoft Excel, I can drag to adjust my column widths. I can also click the column headers to sort the data. I can view each sheet much like I'm navigating a web page. You can see that each of these acts as a hyperlink. I'm going to click to open this plan and profile document. When the sheet comes up in the viewer, I can navigate around much like I'm in an AutoCAD drawing. If I roll my mouse wheel forward or back, I can zoom in and out. If I hold the mouse wheel or the left mouse button down, I can pan. This makes it very easy to review the sheets. When a document is open, if we look to the left or right side of the screen, we will find arrows. Clicking on these, I can quickly jump to the next or previous document in the plan set. Also notice that when a document is open, we'll have a collection of tools at the bottom of the screen. I can use these to adjust my view. I can take measurements, add markups, add hyperlinks, compare sheets, view properties, and adjust settings. When I'm finished reviewing a document, I can click this X in the upper right corner to close it and return to a folder view. Now, if I'd like to find specific sheets in the plan set, I can use this search area. As an example, let's find all the detail sheets. I'm going to type details and I'll press enter. Note that we can see all of the sheets that include that text string. Knowing what we know now, if I drag this over, we can see details right there. To close the search, I can click the X. Here at the top of the screen, I can switch from a folders view to an issues view. This shows me all of the issues associated with this project. Note we can see their status, their title, location, who they're created by and assigned to, the company, due date, the document the issues are associated with. We can also see if the issues have any attachments or comments. Now, if this issue list gets long, we do have some filter options. I'm going to click to open the filter menu. You can see the many variables we can choose from. As an example, let's view all of the issues that are assigned to Jerry Bartles. I'll select his name, and then I'll click Apply, and you can see the filtered list on screen. Let's click to jump back to the Folders view. Here in the upper left corner of the interface, we'll find the Module Selector. If I open this up, I can select a different module. Currently, we're in the Document Management module. You can also see that right here. The number of modules that you see in this menu will depend on your user rights and the number of BIM 360 services that have been activated for the project. Let's stay in Document Management for now. I'll click on Screen to close the menu. Finally, whenever you start using a new application, you're going to have questions. Here in the upper right corner of the screen, we'll find the Help button. Clicking this will open a menu allowing me to access the BIM 360 Learn panel. I can jump into the Document Management Help. I can visit the BIM 360 community. I can submit ideas for improving the product, and I can contact customer support. As an example, we'll bring up the help documentation. We can navigate this much like a website. On the left, we'll see a series of categories that can be expanded to expose the various articles. If I select an article, for instance, we'll grab this one on the user interface. We can read the article over here to the right. I can drag this slider up and down to view all of the information or to follow additional hyperlinks. 
When I'm finished reviewing the help documentation, I'll move up off screen here and click the X to close the tab and return to the folders view. Now that we understand the basics of navigating the BIM 360 docs interface, we're ready to create our first project, and we'll do that in the next session. Would you like to explore additional Autodesk Cloud Collaborative ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the AEC Connection blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.